Well, cheers. And this morning, the level of excitement is high because it's been 11 days since the surgery and it went really well, more of that in a second. And thank you all ever so much for your very kind words of support and best wishes in the comments. I'm absolutely stoked, means a huge amount to me. So thanks again. Now the last 11 days has flown by because over there at work, it has been super, super busy. And that isn't a bad thing because I hate it when I'm not able to train. But over the last kind of three, four days, I've definitely got my mojo back, feeling a hell of a lot stronger. And in all honesty, I kind of felt nearly ready to train, but I held myself back a bit because I wanted to lock in the recovery gains down there. Anyway, feeling ready to get on the bike. So it's gonna be a gradual ramp of power, followed by Ed's aerobic test. Um, and as an FYI, um, I've been keeping the amino acids and the protein shakes kind of in my nutrition regime because I reckon the amino acids from those are gonna help repair the damaged muscle tissue in the abdominal area just that little bit quicker. Well, fingers crossed anyway. So very excited to be back on the bike. Well, I've had a gradual ramp of power every five minutes to bring me up to kind of the yellow, targeting 260 to 275. For the final five minutes, targeting 290 to 300. I found it hard. Heart rate is higher than it would otherwise be. I can feel a lot more lactic acid in the legs. Struggling to talk. Here we go, 300. I report back. So I've been really struggling to hold 290 to 300. Looking forward to this ending. It feels about the same as it did last time I took a week off. Obviously this is a bit longer, a bit more serious. Stoically, I hung on to complete the five minutes, averaging 290 watts, and then moved on to complete the low intensity one hour aerobic test in order to assess the impact of the time off on my aerobic fitness. You'll see the results very shortly. Let's go and check out my post-op review, see some of the scar tissue, and I'll describe my training intent for the next six weeks or so. Now for recovery. Give me. Well, welcome to a slightly unusual conditioning update post laparoscopic appendectomy, i.e. keyhole surgery to remove the appendix. Um, as you can see here, a little bit of bruising remains around the abdominal area, nothing untoward. You'll see in a second, an incredible job was undertaken by my consultant, my surgeon, one of the same individual. Um, since the operation, over the last 48 hours, I've been experiencing acute kind of surging pain through the upper torso. Now that isn't unusual. The doctors, nurses, and surgeon confirm it's a fact of life for some people following the operation and a number of you in the comments of the last video said you've experienced the same and that's because during keyhole surgery they pump carbon dioxide into the torso and that in turn kills off some cells and as those cells die um, it aggravates the nerves and that in turn for me personally has caused certainly chest pain, upper neck pain and back pain. So it isn't at all pleasant when it's there, it hurts a hell of a lot. And Wayne Parsons, I know you said you had to deal with it for seven days. Not at all nice, sir. Anyway, the day after the operation, I spoke to my surgeon um, and he confirmed it had gone as well as could be expected. So super relieved. Um, and as you'll see, a very neat job indeed. Um, so I asked him, well, when can I get back to cardiovascular training, whether it's cycling or running? And he, he confirmed the following. He said, it's very much dependent on how you're feeling. If you're hurting at all, you don't go back. But if after seven to 10 days you're feeling good and then you get back out running or cycling and it isn't hurting, well, you can gradually build it back up again and that's all okay. That's because keyhole surgery is minimally invasive. And as you can see, just three very small incisions. And each of these incisions obviously cuts through the skin, the fat and the membrane and then gets to the muscle. And obviously once they're done, they sew back up the muscle and then they've used glue predominantly for each of the surface areas to heal them back up and just one stitch here on the belly button. So definitely minimally invasive and that's why I'm able to get back to the cardiovascular training, fingers crossed, 
so quickly if I'm feeling okay. But it's a very different story regarding strength training because obviously the abdominal muscles have been weakened as a result of the surgery. And if you go and load up the core through strength training too early, you risk tearing back open those incisions and creating what's called an incisional hernia. And nobody wants that because it could require obviously another operation and would certainly set me back in my fitness objectives. So strength training and the deadlifting is definitely going to be off the agenda. They say don't pick up anything more heavy than 10 kilograms for at least six weeks. And I'll be asking my surgeon, when can I go back to kind of body weight training before I even do that? Which in turn means it's going to be a hell of a lot more time for me, hopefully, fingers crossed, to devote to the cycling. So I'm going to use that extra time to build the base in zone two and zone three. And gradually, as I'm starting to feel kind of better and kind of more energetic post the surgery, I'll be working with Ed to build the zone four, five and six power. So looking forward to that. It's going to be a slightly different kind of lifestyle for the next six weeks or so. Um, but in the meantime, I just want to say thank you very much to everybody in the health service who helped me incredibly professional, made me feel like I was in very safe hands, as certainly was the case. And to myself. Just inside the final minute of my one hour aerobic test. Now during the ramp, I kind of tested how the body was feeling, where it started to become just too much exertion. And that was around the 270 to 300 watts. So I knew that I would be good for 220 to 240 watts here on the one hour aerobic test. And I kind of sustained 230 to 250. I'll be interested to see what the heart rate drift is and also the efficiency factor. And there we go. Just finalizing the lap and into the warm down. I'll put back in a minute. Well, I just highlighted here the 60 minute aerobic test on training peaks. Average power was 240 watts, 3.75 watts a kilogram. So I'm super pleased with that, relieved as well. I guess it just goes to show um, that 12 days off the bike doesn't do too much to harm that kind of tempo power, upper zone two, zone three, that kind of thing. So a good base to build back from. Now turning to my aerobic efficiency, um, Training Peaks measures that using the efficiency factor, which takes your normalized power over the hour test and divides it by your average heart rate. Now my score was 1.43 and that compares to about 1.6 um, before the operation. I was aiming for a high standard according to Ed Lavarack of about 1.8 to 1.9. So a fair bit to do to kind of bring that up to the standard we were aiming for, but not so much to bring it back, I guess, to where I was. So again, a nice base to build for, very much looking to kind of build that endurance, tempo endurance over the course of the next four to six weeks or so. Need a bit of action. But look at this. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? You can just about make out the bottom of the shard just there. Walkie talkie disappeared. A tower bridge in all its glory. Well, it's Saturday and today I'm completing one hour of zone three, zone four, overs and unders. Two minutes zone three, one minute zone four. Here we go. About 55 minutes in. Feeling good. It was indeed great to be back training and I was enjoying the sensation of pushing a little bit harder on a 60 second threshold bursts and then feeling the heart and lungs recover on the two minutes tempo in between. For me personally, overs and unders is a lovely way to train. I thoroughly enjoy it. So my diesel engine, well, it felt in good nick, so spirits were high, especially with the prospect of indulgent weekend carbs on the imminent agenda. Well, I'm still a little bit fragile post-op, so if you liked the video, please remember to tenderly smash the like and or subscribe button. I'd be super grateful. I'm back to the zone three transition now. Well, what can I say? Guilty as charged. 
I do love a good tempo with surge training. I think the surges just make it so much more enjoyable and absorbing than just trying to lay down a consistent power uh, for one hour as I did yesterday after that ramp. Now, this wasn't on the training program and nor was yesterday's ramp followed by an hour of tempo. That's because my personal preference, and this may not work for many of you, but my personal preference when coming back from illness or injury is to have a little experimentation to find where I guess 90% of my limit is and then train comfortably within that for a few days. And that avoids overextending myself or indeed underextending myself, I guess. So none of this is on the training program of Ed. I'm hoping to get back to structured training with him next week, but I was kind of encouraged um, by the one hour at 240 watts yesterday to kind of crack on with this tempo with surge training here. So I doubled the volume compared to the 30 minute blocks that I was undertaking with Ed prior to the operation, but I dialed back the intensity of the surges. So the two minute tempo was 230 to 250 watts, a tad above what I was doing obviously prior uh, to the operation, but the surges were at kind of 290 to 300 watts rather than 400. So somewhat um, lower intensity to say the very least. It could have gone maybe a little bit higher, but it wouldn't have felt quite as good. So really pleased with that. Um, the heart rate ebbed and flowed with the intensity. Average power was about 260 watts. Really looking forward tomorrow to a nice kind of group ride, a vertical chat lap up out the Zwift with many of you, or hopefully you'll join me. And um, intensity is going to be nice and low, kind of two and a half to 2.75 watts a kilogram, hoping to have a little bit of fun. But as I say, this is a method that works for me. It may not work for you. Um, food for thought, I guess. Anyway, going to get back on with the post ride nutrition and looking forward, as I say, to getting back towards structured training with Ed towards the tail end of next week. Well, on the mind right now is the post ride nutrition weekend edition which means all of the good carbs and here they are look at that jane has ordered in because we're still in isolation nice to get here that will definitely be going down shortly oh pan or raison his and hers tell me that doesn't look nice what's this oh the catcher this. Now clearly this is going to keep you occupied Saturday and Sunday but definitely right now a bit of that and one of those. Perfection.